Yeah. Uh, now we'll go to something different. We will uh, go to, uh, to wind power and uh, we'll go to the test field and instead of Fleming Kronke from Tree Wind Power, it will be Anger Madel uh, who will explain from there. Are you on, Anka? Yes, and uh, hello, I hope, yes, I can see the picture coming on now. And um, I will start to say thanks, so I can tell a little about tree wind power. It was supposed to be, I try to see if I can share him, share, yes, I wait. Let's see, start sharing. Maybe you already has. Yes, you got Fleming Wanka. He's the owner of uh, the small company who will manufacture uh, two wind turbine. And um, it's uh, started with for, uh, was it 1978 or something? He started, and even before, when he was a kid to build wind turbine. And uh, today, they have built up to close to 450 wind turbines. And uh, today we work together with the uh, hybrid generator, where it's a battery solution, and we will, after a short time, go out and see it. And I keep going. Yes, it's uh, the company Concas Machine Fabric who manufacture the, um, the two wind turbine. And what I do is um, take care of uh, the electric stuff, the software, and um, the improvement electric kind so uh, and we keep going we keep going to wind power yes we got right now we got two product in the product line a six kilowatt wind turbine 40 square meters it was from the old rule who was easy to uh, to have it approved and now we got a 10 kilowatt and it is a uh, manufacturer about uh, 250 or some 15 or something about the 10 kilowatt and the rest is 6 kilowatt wind turbine and to explain short how they uh, do it and set it up I will show a short video uh, yes and I hope it will work uh, we are not so many there are two men who manufacture it and put it up and in the morning they can have up to two on the trailers one of the truck and one of the trailers but uh, today we only uh, go go with one wind turbine and set it up and they come out for the customer yes they tell a little about uh, the noise level from the wind turbine it's a 10 kilowatt we show how to put up and uh, it's uh yeah they put the rotor together on the ground and they uh, level the find the angle of the blade and you can see it's a white blade it's because to house the 10 kilowatt on only 40 square meters and uh, so we have a little the tower is a uh, finish made from uh, the first was from uh, Carl C. C in Denmark and after that was a priest tower and if I forgot when I have finished test the wind turbine to set the, the Axle the correct way when they put on the rotor, they are always sent me a nice thought because they put the rotor on now. And uh, if I not set the position right when I finish test the wind turbine, and now they put the rotor on and uh, finish the wind turbine. Yes, you can see uh, the load test on the wind have been tested. And the, the, the design of the wind turbine is uh, every fine. Everything is uh, designed with a factor three. So uh, the gearbox is almost a factor three. The blade, everything is designed. Yes, now to put the tower. So we only need the crane when we we uh, put up the wind turbine, and they can put up two wind turbine per day. They go in the morning and they can put up two pieces before they are home again and load. So on this way, we can build four pieces in the week. We can build uh, the first three days, we uh, put it together. And uh, after that, they go out and uh, and put it up in two days. So, uh, yes.
So it's a, uh, yes, the normal height is uh, 25 meter because it's a Danish regulation who uh, run with that. And let's see, not so much more to say, yes. And uh, yeah, they can uh, replace it. They have a small crane, like, like an old day, uh, three foot, not a crane, but a three foot. So they can change gearbox generator and etc. up there. So now the crane can lift. It was cheap not to have him too long uh, visit. So he can go and then they can start up the wind turbine. And uh, it's, uh, yes, now it's the wind turbine is running. And to understand, we don't have so many uh, wind, you know, so we got so many. Uh, we can see we are normal only support Denmark, but it's not the reason we don't want to go out someplace else, but uh, the market has been fine for Denmark. And uh, now we, uh, the market is not so good. We sell one or two a year, a new one. And uh, if people want a wind turbine, they can, uh, buy one, no problem. And uh, there's no sale directly. If you want to buy a two wind turbine, call Fleming Runcare, and uh, it's no uh, big issue. Now I will go out and show you what we work with now. And that's why I would mute uh, this one and go on my phone instead, if I can figure out to do that. Uh, how to, how to, can I uh, go back for Zoom? Stop, yes. Now it's back, uh, stop sharing. And now I mute my. And unmute here. Oh, sorry. So I think I am on the phone now. Yes, it seems like that. So my name is Anka Mardel, and I uh, have worked for Chimul. Yeah, when I took over, when they have to make some data collection. And uh, I hope there's a uh, mm. I hope it's uh, working. No, it's all it is. Can I change the angle of this one? There's a lot of uh, soap. Yes. Oh, we. Yes, yes, we have it. It's your time. Yes. But uh, now we go up for 84 square meter rotor and a new tower who is not so heavy. And what is more interesting is uh, we uh, try to, not try, we have an experiment. We have PV on the six, on this one we have six pieces of 300 watt PV and the controller system for the wind turbine. You can see now, I don't know if you can see it, uh, what is product. But the, the idea with the tubal is it's made of standard components. No fancy, not a lot of sensors. We got the shaking sensors. If there uh, are needs for extra sensors, then uh, you have uh, make a construction failure because uh, then you have used money for sensors instead. It's supposed to be rare, uh, allowable. And uh, right now we are running. Anga, maybe you can go to the uh, uh, test and the uh, hybrid Martin. system. I said maybe you can go to the test and the hybrid system instead of. Is there issue, Martin? Don't I have not? The connection is very bad. Okay, uh, I will see if I can go uh, on a. I uh, try now. I change the. Good morning. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Is it better now? Yes, much better. Oh, thank you, Martin. Thank you. Uh, okay, I hope I'm back again.
on the main screen. Yes, we are working together with the uh, hybrid generator. It was me who was stupid and uh, keep running on uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, and it's a uh, 72 kilowatt hour uh, lithium battery system. And um, it's uh, make a, a 60 kVA uh, grid. And um, as you can see, there is the one plug here. We have we got uh, 125 amps, and we have some uh, cable from the PV and a controlling cable for this uh, setup. And uh, the business case, only got the business case. And you see, we got the uh, know-how about wind turbine, so it's a way we are working together. Now I can open here, and you can see probably. You can see uh, we uh, got a minus. I don't know if you can see it, but we got a negative power now. It's because you can see the power from the PV is delivering energy, and then you think, oh, why don't the uh, wind turbine make? Oh, it's because there is a load, and when we out here, we run for testing. We have a heating, just burn the heat, so there is a nice heat here. And then there have been a lot of discussion how to fix the short circuit. You know, if there's a short circuit on the grid, uh, Una have designed it. So uh, this one delivery 150, I think, is uh, set for 125. I think 100, yes, 125 amps. So uh, if there is a short circuit on the grid, this box can deliver the power. So uh, it's the idea to, to keep it simple. And uh, why are we not out on the market yet? It's uh, because um, we want to know before we send it out that it's reliable. So we can trust it will work to send it out. Moon already sent uh, the hybrid generator out and he delivered with a, a diesel gen set besides. And uh, we know it's a, it's a complete set. Rune can tell me more about that. And uh, we're working together with him. So um, it's to know how to run in Iceland and, uh, may, and uh, have a stable grid. One of the other things we have, uh, we have, um, I mean, is uh, the wind turbine is the fluctuating, not the problem. But the problem is how to produce energy with very low wind. When we have day with low wind, then we have to keep the system up running. Yes, we can start the diesel, but it's a lot of our the small, and I don't know there probably too much noise around on the microphone. So. It was a short description what we're working with uh, with uh, the new and that yeah again the tower is not so scary so not too boring too much so uh, how to stop on I am mute my microphone okay you uh, thank you very much Anga it was good also to see how it actually worked at the taste station here at the Folke Center. Uh, we will uh, later see uh, Rune Eilersen after Professor Dr. Engineer uh, Kalalas Mann uh, has uh, given us his report about education in renewable energy in Africa countries. But uh, thank you very much. Uh, and we, uh, we just want to be sure that uh, uh, Dr. Kalal is online. Are there any questions for um, Angamadel? about the uh, tree moon and the hybrid. It seems not for the time being. So, um, but anyhow, you have seen that uh, uh, what can actually be done in, uh, at the test station, it's not only wind turbine, it's also uh, things connected to the wind turbines, which can be measured and developed and make uh, market ready. And um, it's good to know that. 
people are really aware about uh, actually having no failures and uh, and uh, no reclamation uh, for pr products delivered who does not function 100 percent so uh, that's also what can be done here and normally will be done for other test stations as well but yeah is dr galal in he is in yes Dr. Galal, can you hear us? Are you on? Please raise your voice. Um, yeah, uh, I'll ask uh, Unai, listen, are you ready to go in instead now? It seems as uh, Dr. Galal has some technical problems. Um, I need uh, five minutes to be ready here, thank you. You need five minutes, yeah, okay, that's fair. You're not supposed to be on yet, so it's, it's fair. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I just moved again. Uh, I get back in five minutes. That's all right. But in the meantime, there might some of you these uh, questions uh, which we have raised earlier today. Maybe we can take some of it up. Um, uh, I don't know if there are some uh, um, questions for um, for um, Fritzok. You're there, Fritz. I suppose. I actually had a question for Fritz if he's around. Yes. yes. Uh, so in your presentation, you were talking about the importance of getting the lithium batteries out of IoT devices because it simply it doesn't scale well enough if we want to have enough of these devices around. Um, but I think there does need to be some sort of storage that we can use. Um, I was wondering, do you, do you know what folks are looking into? Like, do they want to use capacitors or some other kind of battery that doesn't involve lithium or any other sort of idea? Yes, um, it's um, uh, a difference between uh, non-rechargeable and rechargeable batteries. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially the um, non-rechargeable, we have to lower uh, the number of these batteries. Mm -hmm. uh, but still, we uh, for uh, storage, we need rechargeable batteries. Okay. Um, but the lifetime of a rechargeable battery um, with a good energy management can be five to eight years. That's, that's, uh, um, and then for the very low uh, energy amounts, um, it's better to have a supercapacitor. Uh, a capacitor can be loaded and unloaded ten thousands uh, of times. So mm -hmm. uh, you see in the, in the rotor uh, blade mechanism the same, uh, the, the, the change from batteries to uh, capacitors. Uh, because of the lifetime and the, the, the best thing is to um, uh, design uh, it in a way uh, that it will last for the whole time of uh, uh, the electronics. So it matches the lifetime of the sensors and there's no need to... Yeah, yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Cool, thanks. So we'll take the next uh, question from Marche. And uh, Marche, who is the uh, question for? Uh, hi, yes, uh, Fritz, I, I have a question uh, to, to Fritz uh, about yes. this presentation. Uh, Fritz, uh, you, you showed a lot of uh, interesting uh, things about uh, small devices and empowering these devices. Uh, I, I, I actually asked you over the chat about the 5G technology that we're looking into using uh, uh, this new generation technology. Uh, protocol uh, and Internet of Things. Are you aware of any uh, transmission of data via 5G already in this small uh, scale? No, I'm not aware of that. Um, my first question to you would be why 5G? Um, uh, most of the um, 
um, designs uh, working with 3 and 4G, but there are also a lot of uh, other uh, ways to send your data. If, even by satellite at the moment, it's a very interesting development. Uh, predominantly because if you look at to, you know, look into uh, devices that uh, measure uh, vibrations on blade and the range of uh, uh, turbulence uh, spectrum, uh, if you put uh, uh, the sensors on our vortex generators and you start measuring uh, on 50 of, the, uh, of such small devices per blade, you have a lot of data coming your way, especially if you're measuring at high frequency. So 5G is going to be able to accept that many uh, data packets uh, sent uh, at one time. And the second thing is that uh, within a wind farm, uh, the big wind uh, farm, uh, you can have many of these small devices and all of a sudden if they all start talking uh, at the same time, then uh, the data speed uh, might become an issue. Uh, and finally, the last uh, argument for that is that many cities you use the uh, city, uh, the smart city concept, uh, and for example, in my hometown, already uh, the 5G infrastructure is being prepared. So, uh, thinking about all these devices communicating um, uh, starts making sense. So, hence, hence the question. I understand. I understand. But um, we are we have now a conference on small wind and um, the, everything. Everything should be as cheap as possible. Um, and that's the reason um, I'm uh, also working with citizen science. Uh, everything should be as cheap as possible. Um, and uh, there are uh, free frequencies. And uh, that's my favorite for the moment. Uh, 5G can be interesting for big, big wind turbines uh, with a lot of uh, financing uh, things. Um, um, I, I, I'm not... Um, I'm not for 5G at the moment, but it, if you have a lot of data, sometimes it's uh, you have to. That, that's right. But for the moment, for this conference, uh, I'm focusing on uh, the cheaper ones, the free ones, the open source ones. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you. Rich, I hope you've got your answer. And next. Yes, uh, we'll see if uh, Dr. Galal is on, and if he's not, uh, the next question will come from Torstein. Yeah, hi, can you hear me? Just a moment, yes, we can. <clears throat> All right, I have a comment to Fritz regarding uh, the use of these small micro wind turbines uh, in uh, snow wind conditions. Now, um, uh, if, even if the turbines are painted black, and I say this from experience, having deployed a lot of these uh, micro turbines in very uh, inhospitable uh, places on mountain tops and so forth, uh, they will accumulate snow and ice. Um, but what is important is that when um, the the snow and ice start to melt, uh, and the turbine start spinning, it will cause an imbalance to the rotor and the turbine must be uh, constructed very ruggedly to, uh, to survive those forces. But of course the black paint, uh, you know, it helps a lot, uh, but, but in any case, uh, it, in extreme situations, the uh, snow and ice will build up. Thank you. Yes. That, yeah. Yes, you're um, you're right. Um, uh, to make a long story short, uh, have a look at the website of UNEFCO, uh, and there is the whole story um, about the development uh, of um, uh, um, a good turbine that lasted for 24 years on sailing yachts uh, and didn't uh, uh, get it on uh, their um, application. Um, and uh, it costed them seven years of development to get a, a rugged turbine uh, that withstand uh, all the things you mentioned. Uh, even stones from a, a, what which come down uh, in these mountains uh, with snow. Thank you very much, um, Fritz. There is uh, one question more coming from Mintao. 
Okay, thank you so much for presentation. I would like to ask about the CP, the power efficiency. So, because now I'm also working um, uh, in um, open side channel with win vertical exit to buy, and then I experience a lot of pain when I compare between simulation and experiment, uh, especially with the CP. So I see much different because we cannot control the condition because they're from the rear condition. So can you share us a little bit how what kind of pain you also ex uh, this, uh, happened to you and how much CP you compare between simulation, numerical simulation and experience. And then now in the open, open channel, how much CP you got? Mm. Well, well, I don't really understand your question. Um, um you want to know how uh, the wind conditions in the cities uh, are used yeah because you know when you settle or employ, employ, uh, uh, deploy any uh, the tobai you will also have a compare between numerical simulation or not you just only do you have a no. No, no. Normally, um, you put on uh, a, a cheap wind management system on mm -hmm. the location uh, you want to place your sensor, and then you uh, measure, um, for instance, three months, uh, better a year, uh, and then you have a, a yearly average. And on this yearly average, uh, on your wind, um, and I have uh, some places where it's around two meters a second average. That's for a normal horizontal axis turbine. You, you can't do nothing with it. So uh, you, uh, vertical and even if the efficiency is very, very low, uh, but if uh, it delivers enough electricity to power the sensor, it's okay. Uh, so so the efficiency, normally an efficiency for a big wind turbine can go up to 50%. But if it's one person with, with a vertical turbine for a sensor, it's enough. But how about the turbine? How much CP you got? You have? Um, that depends on what you need. Uh, uh, it can uh, go up from picowatt to uh, uh, let's say twenty watt. Mm. But so as understood, so you not you skip the numerical simulation. You skip the uh, numerical test. You just only go to the open open side and then to deploy the, the turbine, correct? Yes, so, uh, uh, we, we don't uh, make a theoretical uh, uh, um, um, calculation. It's just a, pr a practical practical measurement and then you have the, f the figures uh, you want. Uh, and you can use very cheap measurement. Within 10% accuracy is enough. Yeah, but I see the, the, the approaching, you will waste a lot of money also the, the work. Because when you adjust in theoretical simulation or test, you can, you can reduce the cost. So, but okay, so thank you. Let me know more. Uh, let me know about the, what you're doing. Thank you so much. Now I know more. Thank you. Thank you. You can also contact me afterwards. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mintao. Well, uh, Dr. Galal Osman, are you ready?